Hello everyone, welcome to Retro Lunch. Today we're going to be talking about putting Skyrim on the AYN Thor. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was a special game for me because it came out during a time just before I was married, which means that I actually had time to invest inside of a game. This was about 14 years ago on November 11th, 2011. I poured so many hours into that game. It built on top of previous games with Oblivion and Morrowind, and it was able to tweak and adjust the gameplay so that it fit really nicely within a controller, a little bit more consoleized. I recognize for people who are really into computer RPGs, it may have been a little bit too simple, but for me, it was just this perfect balance of a massive game with a huge story, what felt like an epic adventure, as well as something that you could play very comfortably both on a computer, on a console. I played on every device possible. Now. Since then, I just don't have the time and energy to go and revisit that world. It is comforting, it is familiar, but it's also huge. There's so much to do. What changed for me was getting this. This is the AYN Thor. The Thor, while an incredibly powerful console, it is what I was looking at or what I was thinking about when I got this, the Retroid Pocket Flip 2, right? This was a powerful handheld, and for me, at the time, this was an endgame handheld. Like this, I thought I needed this, this is done. But with the Thor, while I'm enjoying the dual screen aspect of it, the truth is I'm actually not using it that much. I'm probably spent spending most of my time with the bottom screen turned off. It is handy when I'm doing some multitasking operations. So for example, if you're downloading a file on the browser on the top screen, I don't have to go switch apps to open that file. I can just go to the files app on the bottom screen, launch it and then continue my tasks. This is really handy, but for gaming, Primarily on the top screen with the 120 hertz display. Looks really crisp, really beautiful. Once Android started to be able to play PC games via Game Hub, Game Native, and Game Hub Lite, that changed things for me. Now it is still very fiddly. It is not just plug and play. And that's actually what we're gonna be going through today, which is to get Elder Scrolls Skyrim working on this device so I can play with it as I go, as I'm waiting in the car to pick up my kids. Um, it does require some configuration after you do the install. So let's go through the steps. I'd like to start off by saying that the instructions being described here were actually provided by TechTweeb. So we will link to TechTweeb's original post as well as the video where he mentions how to do it. Now, let's start by going into GameHub. Today I'll be using GameHub. I have tried this on Game Native as well as GameHub Lite. I've actually been having some trouble with GameHub Lite. And so to start with, what you're going to want to do is go into the Google Play Store. It is now available via Google Play. After you launch GameHub, you're going to want to go here into the Steam section and provide your Steam credentials. I found it handy to log into Steam using the QR code link. Once Steam is linked, you should be able to browse through your Steam library or press the Y button to search. Skyrim. Enter. Now in my case, I own both Skyrim as well as Skyrim Special Edition. We will go through um, both since there is a little bit of a trick to get Skyrim Special Edition to work. It will not work with the default and provided instructions. From here you can go in and you should see an install button here. Now once that's done, the game will not work out of the box. If you try to launch it, you will get the gameplay to start, but you'll have no voice and no background music. So let's go through the steps. Well, what you'll want to do here, starting with Elder Scrolls Skyrim, when you see the menu entry, press the three dots to get into PC game settings. You want to go over here to component, and there's two libraries that you're going to want to install. It's Gecko and Mono. So let's go through an example where we install Gecko. Go to install component, Gecko, press it, and you'll see the spinner spin. Installation complete, Gecko and Mono. Back. And now there is another step which is going here to back in general. You want to open the desktop container. So press this to open it. This is going to open the um, emulated Windows desktop. So you're going to see almost a Windows like experience that pops up in just a moment. From here, I'm using my finger as the mouse pointer. You want to go into my computer. You want to go into the X drive, go here into DirectX 10, and then scroll all the way until you see the DX10 install. What you want to do is run this dx setup.exe. 
why during the install this didn't just work, I don't know. But accept, next, next, and allow this to install. After that, um, you should be able to exit the this container by going into this app start section and shutting it down. Take an ugly tone. Halt to believe it was just a coincidence that the first dragon anyone's seen for centuries attacks just as Alfred was about to be executed. Of course, I know today wasn't the best introduction to the Legion, but I hope you'll give us another chance. The Legion could really use someone like you. Especially now. And if the rebels have themselves a dragon, General Tullius is the only one who can stop them. So for Skyrim Special Edition, we're going to go mostly through the same steps, but with one tweak. We launch the browser here on the bottom screen. What you're going to search for is DirectX Runtime June 2010. I recommend getting it directly from the source and directly from Microsoft website. Let's make sure that you're not installing anything shady. So from here, download. Okay. Once you've downloaded the file, you don't want to install it here. What you want to do is let's go back up to the top screen, view details, three dots, PC settings. We're going to go back over here to open container. And the reason why we're doing this is because in Skyrim, um, in the original version of Skyrim, you had the DirectX 10 redistributable to install here in the X directory. But here, you'll notice, it's not here. There's no folder here that has the DirectX 10 redistributable. So we're gonna go back to my computer. Let's go to the D drive. And you can see here is where I have the DirectX 10 redistributable downloaded. So what it'll do when you first download is that it's asking for a directory where you can extract the files. You can choose anything. So this is not the install, this is the unzip process. And we're just gonna install it in the same directory where the executable is. We'll start, it's gonna unpack all those files. This will look like the folder that we saw earlier um, in the DX10 folder on the original version of Skyrim. And then from there, run dxsetup.exe, allow it to install, exit the container. And now let's, run, let's launch Skyrim Special Edition. Thank you everybody for joining. Remember to stay retro, stay gaming, stay awesome.